So, I guess for anybody that came here for a quick answer hmm. to is Lisa, Lisa appropriating, I guess the quick answer for me would be no. Okay. I, I don't know if you guys feel the same. I would say no. I would say no. So, if that's all you wanted, you can definitely go about your business. But if you want to hear a deeper conversation about it, then you can stick around and check it out. Okay. So, what I did was, I wanted to look up the two words separately and see what it said. So, culture is the custom, um, the custom, art, and social institute and achievements of a particular nationality, people, or social group. Okay. Right. So, appropriate is to take exclusive possessions of or to take or make use of without authority or right. So culture appropriation is arguably a combination of the two. Right. But I like the definition that I found for culture appropriation because it's it's also said that it's usually an issue if it's done by the dominant society in a way that damages the people that it originated for. Mm. Mm, yeah. And I feel like that's key to why I don't have an issue with what Lisa did in her music video. Because, for one, Lisa's not part of the dominant society. And two, I don't feel like what she did hurt anybody. Now, I can't tell people how to feel, no. per se, but what I mean by she didn't hurt anybody is like, I didn't walk away from that video feeling like she stole something. Let me give you an example, because it's like, when I think of culture appropriation, right, I think of, and I like the artist, but Katy Perry, right? Mm -hmm. She did that, uh, the joint with Juicy J. Mm -hmm. Fire oh, record. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, fire record, but the music video that were in Egypt, right? They did the whole Egypt thing, most of the models were white. Why is that culture appropriation? Because the history of Egypt is already distorted, right? Like when people think of Egypt, they don't think of melanated people No. in Egypt. And that's because of Hollywood. Right? Yeah, Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood had a lot of white actors play Egyptians. They had the what, King Gods of Egypt, the movie that flopped because of cultural appropriation and one of the gods was Chadwick Boseman and all the other gods were white. It was called like the Gods of, gods of Egypt. Let me look that up. No, it was called the Gods of Egypt. Was it? And the movie just straight up flopped. 2016? And they didn't, and they oh, didn't well, understand. Oh, I never seen that. <laughs> yeah, I never even seen they that. They didn't understand why it flopped. And it was just like, well, the backlash was real because when you put that image out there, you're kind of hurting the truth because people don't know the truth. Yeah. But I feel like most people know that braids are like a black thing, but it's like, or comes from African American, African culture. Yeah. But uh, other cultures have been doing braids for a while. Oh yeah. The, 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 the last time I remember having an issue with somebody from another group doing braids, it was Kim Kardashian, right? Kim Kardashian's done braids a billion times, but it was one time she did it that I had an issue with. And it was because it was an Insta Instagram post where she was just like, look at these braids that I got. Me and my friend did them. We, we created them ourselves. We got yeah, a yeah, name they for got, them. Yeah. We decided to call them the Kiki Twist. Yeah. It's like, I'll never forget it. And I was just like, yeah, no, do. mofo. That, those are box braids. They're not. And like people were like explaining to her. Yeah. Like, cause I was just like, how Kanye ain't tell her before she posted that? Like, nah, honey, you didn't. You didn't That's not that. a... <laughs> It's not that she couldn't wear the braids, but it's you're taking credit for something yeah, that you stealing don't necessarily it. do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's this teeter totter thing where are you hurting the culture? Are you taking something away from the culture? You know what I mean? I feel like when you when we listen to K pop, there's a lot of elements of urban and contemporary African music, right? Black music, whether it's eighties R and B. 90s R&B, early 2000s R&B. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of the pop sound. There's a lot of the rap. You know what I'm saying? Arguably, the just the swag of rap 
is attitude African American thing. Yeah, like it's not even an African thing. It's like an African African American thing. Yeah, the attitude. It comes and from the trauma, and it's kind of like a way you walk, way you talk. But then again, if you grow up around black people, that's just kind of how you are, right? Like yeah. so when you see Eminem, right? That's kind of just how he is. When I see Eminem, I didn't think he was faking. No, no, no. Not at all. But for context, when I saw Iggy Azalea, uh-huh. I was just like, <laughs> she's kind of faking because... She's super faking. Because when you heard her talk outside of rapping, it was a whole different attitude, whole different way of... whole different vocabulary, arguably like like Plies. You know what I'm saying? Like She's talking like <laughs> She's talking like Plies. Like, you know how Plies <laughs> talk country as hell, but when you hear him talk, like Jamie Foxx yeah, cracked jokes about it, like, hey, man, you know, he's like, yo, man, I'm, I'm, I'm me, Plies. I'm like, yo, man, it's a real dude, man. Yo, man, you ready to go to strip club? He's like, no, actually, I wanted to speak to you about the particulars of this video. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is you? <laughs> you ain't Plies? Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's just this thing, right? I, I don't know who had an issue with the braids in the video. We watched it. It didn't even. I didn't even I didn't think about it. it. Yeah, I didn't even notice it. Do you remember that that, that hip hop group we watched where we cringed? That was a lot. Back Thursday. <laughs> I don't remember the group name, but I remember the video, and that was hard. Um, yeah, I lot. don't even want to talk about that. Like one. it felt like they were reaching. Like we we saw Yumda's video, right? I didn't think that was being phony. True I, that. I felt like that was probably. His general attitude. When I see Jesse, oh, yeah. ooh, 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 that seems like <laughs> that. That Jesse seems like Jesse. Why do I say that? Because, you talking about uneducated kid or, or no? No, I'm talking no, about no. Jesse. Oh, just, just no. I'm telling the video. Yeah, you were the, saying the, everybody every, in the in the video. As far as from what I can tell, yeah, I didn't. Okay. I didn't feel like anybody was faking. It'd be one thing if they say cut and they they all go put on suits and ties. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then when we see, like Jesse's a good example, right? Because yeah. Jesse's a new. She's Korean, but she's a New Yorker. Oh, you can tell. If, if you know oh, a New Yorker and you see Jesse, you be like, she 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 spent some time in New York. Yeah. yeah. A lot you of know. time. Yeah, and, and she's Jesse, whether you're watching her on Instagram, whether she's interviewing twice, whether she's just making a music video. She it's the same attitude, same whether she's in front of the suits or not. Yeah. And that's why Nobody bothers her. Yeah, respect. She she can put cornrows. Uh, she she wears she's wearing corn cornrows before, and I don't feel like it was problematic. It's it's if you, are you are you hurting the culture? Are you are you like Stealing. taking away from yeah. the culture with intentions that are are not good? Because a, a lot of K-pop songs are you know written or produced are helped out by artists that are in America that are African American. So it's like and they're heavily influenced bro, like hip hop culture influences damn near every country. Too much. <laughs> We've had this conversation. Yeah, we did. You know, and listen, at the end of the day, I just I just wanna say this. Um I felt Lisa had a genuine uh reaction to that question. And she really handled it with grace and sincerity. And um, I don't believe that she might have thought at the time, like, you know, oh, this is bad. Like, you Not know, even she, a little bit. Like she said, you know, she thought it was a cute, you know, cool hairstyle. Um, now, if I was to be upset about it, I would blame it on the team surrounding her. I mean, if you want to put the blame on somebody, people know, like, oh, maybe that's not a good idea. But at the end of the day, I don't think it was any ill intent in it. No. And I feel like sometimes people are reaching. Um, to, to all the people in the comments saying, y'all just stands, y'all y'all caping for her, what, what would you respond to them? Because I feel like... That we're caping for who? Well, I'm just saying, caping hypothetically, 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 like, you know, y'all just saying that because y'all fans. Like No, so... What do you say to people like that? Because I feel like we're gonna, you get a lot of responses like that. Or y'all just saying that because y'all like her. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Man. What do you say to people like that? Because I know they're going to be typing away. Well, say that. well, just one thing that you said that you don't feel like there was any ill intent. 
I don't think that matters because mm-hmm. I don't. I'm pretty sure when Kim Kardashian said that they invented the Kiki break, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. it still was like. Damn Skirt man. hit the brakes. Yeah. I don't know who made you think you was invited to the cookout. <laughs> I know you was with Ray J and all these guys, but that don't mean, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But uh, at the end of the day, it's like, I just don't feel like she was trying to do anything ill, Ill like, you know, hurt to her. I, it just of didn't not. come off that way. Yeah, I, of course I, I watched the video. If, Normally, if it's something like that, I feel like, yo, something's up. Like, this ain't feeling right. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's a feeling that you get. Yeah. And I i didn't get that feeling. So, and my question is, is who, like, I, I don't understand where this started at. Because it said there were some blinks that were upset. And I'm just like, so who are these blinks? Because... I just didn't see an issue. I, I watched the video. We watched... It, if it was, if I saw it, I would have said something immediately. Oh yeah, you talking we, about this one? I guess, oh, yeah. I but at that. the same time, I still don't see that as problematic. Yeah, because I mean, I don't know. I I I really don't know what to say to that. Like, I don't know. Continue what you were saying. I'm sorry to cut <laughs> you off. But no, it's nobody's caping for Lisa, right? And the reason being is because I felt like she handled it. On her own. Yeah, she don't need it. She listened to a fan explain what culture appropriation was. And she apologized if she hurt anybody. But look at her response. It it didn't seem like she was faking that she cared. It seemed like she really was just like, oh, you know, I apologize for anybody I hurt. Now, I was just like... It sounds like she wasn't very aware of what culture appropriation is, which I think is kind of weird because it's like in the kind of climate and world we're in, you gotta I be feel sensitive. like everybody kind of needs to know about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, just just so you're aware of how other people might feel about what you're doing and what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, even if she listened to the girl and didn't apologize, I still wouldn't have felt any type of way. Because no, no. I, I don't feel like she did anything wrong. She just wanted to shut it down immediately. Like, look, I didn't, I, if I did anything wrong, you know, I'm sorry. I need to go talk to my team yeah. and figure out and make sure nothing like this happens again. You kind of, you kind of, she, ha- you kind of got to be sensitive to it. Just because, you know, the, the climate that we're in, you got to, you know, we all have opinions and it should be respected, you know, so you got to kind of be, um, you know, understanding and listen. But but at the end of the day, like, it's really not that big of a deal, you know. So, sometimes I feel like it kind of hurts the culture in some regards. You know, people use that as expression. Mm-hmm. Express yourself, man, you know. It's hip-hop, it's this, like, embrace the culture. Like, we we want people to embrace it. You Some know? people get mad at you about that because I look at tw- I'm just curious looking at the tweets and somebody said that you know they're tired of saying braids is just hip hop. Yeah, braids is just hip hop. Well, what he was just saying, you know, is embracing the culture and hip hop and somebody who I'm assuming. What a culture like is saying that. Nas you know, said something a that. long time ago, right? Nas said, you know, uh, like hip hop is uh, going on to bigger stages. He's like. Yeah, he's, he's, that's a good point, too. He said, I don't know if I... He said, it's crazy to peep it. I don't know if I want the world to get it or if I want to keep it my little ghetto secret. Yeah, because so it takes a life like, of its own. You, you kind of got to choose your... You got to pick your poison. It's just like hip-hop culture has grown to this huge thing that's influencing people all over the world. It's you could bigger. go to London yeah. and there's people spinning on their heads, tagging graffiti. Like, we don't even tag like that in America anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, and, and those guys are creating communities. Like, mm-hmm. we use hip-hop. That was our community. That's the way we dealt with the things that was going on. Mm-hmm. And other cultures are embracing that and, and doing the same within their communities, you mm-hmm. know? So, to me, that's a, that's a positive thing, you know, mm-hmm. what's happening. But you, you make a good point. Now, it's so big that those guys interpret it a different way now. It takes up on a life of its own. It's like mac and cheese, you know? We make our mac and cheese one way, some other co- coaches take it and put ketchup in it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it just, some people make their mac and cheese out the box. Out the box, you know? But, you know. I've tried it before. You I can have. say 1080p? 
She's ketchup. I have bit. tried ketchup before. You heard about it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've tried it. But that's the beauty of it. Sometimes from that you create things that we probably never even see mm -hmm. because those person, those people took it and created something different. That's that's how these things spread. It's a beautiful, it's a natural progression of things. Now, um, I, I'm just digging while we're talking. I did not know for uh, Lily's film number four, she was receiving flack for wearing a do-rag. I heard something about that. I mean, what? I, I mean, so we're going, so we going to cancel Kai for wearing the Ron Stone do-rag too? That's what I'm saying. Like, like, look, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I knew black people that wore do-rags and weren't trying to get waves. I, 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 yeah. I actually <laughs> was trying to keep my waves spinning when I was wearing a do-rag. Got to. But Mandatory. there were people that just wore do-rag. Like, oh, matter of fact, when I used to have corn rolls, I would wear the do rag to keep my my braids from getting messed up. Yeah, you had to. Yeah, it, it preserves your braids for like an extra week. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it, it's it, and it's a style thing. I don't really see many um, black folks wearing do rags anymore. It's kind of like a rare thing, and bro, it's still it's still hip hop culture. Like I know. Lisa is not a hip hop artist yeah, per se. Yeah, She's right. a K pop artist that raps in a K pop yeah. group, right? That's what's going on. But you can clearly see, I mean, she said she was influenced by Lisa Left Eye Lopez, right? Yeah. Is is Lisa Left Eye Lopez? She she was an R and B she was in an R and B group. She was a hip hop rapper that was in an R and B group. Amazing so talent. would kind of just put her in the R&B category, even though she didn't really sing on anything. She was influenced by hip hop culture, bro. It's everywhere. Is that the problem? Is what, I mean. No, like I'm just I saying, said, I'm just, you know, I'm just so, talking. Is that the problem that the fact that hip hop is gone, you know, the, the culture has gone worldwide, it's gone to a, to a no. state where a lot of people are influenced by it, right? So is the problem that, because like for me, it's just like for in, in, in her case, she clearly didn't, she wasn't aware that it would have caused this much. I, I truly believe her because, I mean, I feel like she wanted to respond to her because of that. Well, yeah. she didn't say and, she didn't know that it would get that far. She said she really didn't know what culture appropriation was at all. Do you believe that? I yeah. believe her that she didn't believe what it was. I just think it's in this I day and age I just, people don't know. I just it. say no. I mean, well, I would have to say I would think a lot of these agency industries, businesses, what labels, whatever, should know that this is a thing. Like, absolutely, especially if you study the music and yeah, the yeah. they should know that this is a thing. So but, I can't just sit here and say that says, she didn't who know. Who says they're actually studying? Like the culture and know any of that stuff themselves. They're studying and the music. You gotta, you, they're studying the music. They're listening so they should the know. Music. That yeah. doesn't mean they're studying. But, like, we, okay, but so that's part of studying that when you okay, listen. There's, you know? there's one key thing that I don't know if anybody really like talks about much, but if you like look at like African American and Korean relations relationships, like when Koreans first came in the country, it goes, it goes back it goes quite back. a bit of time. Long time yeah. And, yeah. and it wasn't the best relationship mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you know, the LA, the LA riot started because like a Korean store owner had shot, like everybody talks about Rodney King. That was one part of it. Yeah. The main thing was the Korean uh, store owner that shot the 15 year old girl that she thought was trying to steal what she wasn't. And she didn't get any jail time. Yeah. Uh, that what is what set the city off, and then there yeah. was a whole bunch of Korean store owners that got their guns because there were black store um, black folks and rioters that were burning down some of the um, businesses. So, but the thing is, is I think at that time the Korean parents were influenced by the media. Oh yeah, the yeah. Media. So so when you looked at what was on TV at the time, man, it's the society. Well, South Central, Jews, Boys in the Hood. So they're coming to this country trying to create a living for themselves, and they're being fed these movies, feel, feeling like this is how everybody in these areas are. But the thing was is that they felt offsetting, but their children didn't because their children went to school with us. Yeah. 
So oh, their yeah. children went to school with our our like with, with our parents, which okay. is our, and then we grew up together. So they became part of hip hop culture. Yeah. Same thing with some of the parents at the time that were not for their kids going to school with black kids, like Joe Biden and a couple other people. They didn't want their kids. They didn't want their kids going to school with black mm-hmm. kids. Yeah. And then those kids went to school with black kids, and they're just like, "Dad, you tripping? They're like everybody else, man. You mm-hmm. know." Barry's cool. Me and Barry's cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. he, he let me hear his Dr. Dre album. It's the most incredible thing I have heard. Yeah. You know, I, I still like Queen, but that Dr. Dre bass line is crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. as they grew up together, that wound started healing a little bit, and they became part of the culture as well. You watch America's Best Dance Crew, and they dance just like all the other like poppers and lockers and and the people that started the thing because they came up in the culture too and and it's nothing fake about something when you're actually part of the culture no i mean no and then and then you naturally introduce it you blend it with your culture you know so that's just a natural progression of things you got to think well like i don't even think if you, you can ask 10 people, what's the definition of culture appropriation, and you'll get 10 different answers. Mm-hmm. I don't even think we really even know um, the, uh, what, what it means, but we know how, how it has impacted us in the past. Elvis is probably one of the most uh, famous ones, you know, who did it. But those things, they took culture and made millions, made a lot of money, built, you know, businesses off of it, and didn't, one, give us credit, um, didn't give us any money. Mm-hmm. We see it now with the TikTok, right? people doing the dances and not even giving credit to the artists. And these guys are going off and getting millions and millions of subs, getting endorsements, and not even crediting the artists. That so goes though, back to the definition I said, though, because it's being taken by the dominant society and it's hurting a different, another group. Yeah. Because Elvis, the, the labels didn't feel like they can push black artists like that. So they got black artists to write Elvis's music and they didn't get paid correctly. Yes, yeah, stole it. So what happens? That that family is robbed of wealth that can feed their genera- feed generations, but Elvis's family is not. Right. And they get the op- opportunity to like take it and and act like they didn't wasn't influenced by anything, mm-hmm. you know. So so do you think that the a motivational factor in all this is just because of money and how it sounds, because it sounds more hip hop I, I, I and mean, it's everything. From my understanding, it's the picture that people are upset. No, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to give another detail because I saw some um, Twitter comments saying, "Oh, Lisa want to be black so bad, this and this and that." that that's a point. Do you think just because it's a like, if this was a K-pop release, a Korean release with more? K-pop elements, do you think it'll still be getting the same attention that it is? Or because the song sounds more of the culture of hip-hop and black artists? In other words, maybe it's not us who are upset. Maybe it's maybe on the other end that, that could be upset and could just be trying to say, hey. But then somebody will say, well, it was a black fan that wrote the letter. But how do we know that? It's so complex, man. And what it does, I feel like it stomps the creativity of the of the artist. You know, like she put out an amazing record. Didn't even notice the hairstyle. Thought it looked nice. Looked amazing. Like that's just, that's hair. You know, she's not ad marketing and saying that yo, I created this. I've invented this. This is mine. You know, she's created then art. I would, then I would have a serious issue. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. she's just she's being herself. She's tapping into a new era, and people, especially here, loving it. You know. It's it's a dope it's a great record. I just, I just feel like because of the amount of the success of the record, and just I mean I I know you know music is um what's the word I'm looking for. It's different for everybody. Okay, I get it, and not everybody liked the record, regardless of what your thoughts is and everything like that. But it ain't that deep, yo. To me, like, it, when it gets to, like, when you're saying, you know, people are trying to say they created this and stuff like that, okay, it gets to another level. But from what we have known of Blackpink, Lisa, career, and everything. I see what you're saying. And how they have 
embrace their artistry and making the music how we've seen them yeah i would think that people wouldn't just automatically jump to this conclusion like i'm that's where i'm conflicted at because it's like it's not like lisa's a brand new artist that we don't know about well, well she's not a brand she is true but you're right about that she's you're right. but she's challenging a brand she's challenging i mean i said i even said in the reaction like are you sure yeah <laughs> only because i felt like there's gonna be some people that's not gonna be happy about this. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah but does yeah. everybody else on their side in their camp? Yeah. It's like I I don't want to I don't want to go too deep. I hate uh, I don't try to be very careful how that's I feel. Okay, yeah, okay. But like it's like like any like like interracial dating, right? You know, could this be like a like a oh a gateway type thing? Like is this a gateway song? You know. Like oh, if if we if we praise this, if we enjoy this, then you know what what's gonna be the next record? You know, could could it be one of those things? Like I I don't know, you know. So let's just say that the person that did write this was a black person that was upset. At the end of the day, the issue still points back to like white supremacy. At the end of the day. And the reason why I say that is because we view everything through that lens, right? So the whole idea is, right? In America, yeah. Because I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate, right? If if you wrote that, I guess the argument would be, if Rap City did that song, would it be as successful? The answer is no. If Cardi did the song, would it be successful? I get where you're going with this. I, yes. I get it. <sighs> it still would be successful. So... You got to remember, like, everything is still painted through, like, a Eurocentric point of view. So it's just like, like I said, Rap City song wouldn't be as successful if she had the same beat, chose the same hook. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so I honestly wouldn't want to see it either, man. <laughs> but, but, but at the end of the day, that's not Lisa's fault, the way everything is viewed in America. Yeah. yeah. They, they said that when they were doing the Rosa Parks movie and the writer, the guy that wrote the movie, I didn't watch the movie, but the guy that wrote the movie, he said he took it to the studio and they read it and they gave him a round of applause. It was like, so who were you thinking about playing Rosa Parks? And then he's like, uh, I got a couple actresses in mind. And then the guy cut him off and was like, yeah, I, I think we can get Julia Roberts for the role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's and the writer was just like, Julia Roberts, yeah. but but she's not black, and the director's like yeah, they won't know the difference. It's like it's, it's it's we're past that now, and it's just like I feel like I've heard this story, but it's it's baffling me Google still. It. Yeah, but it's just like you're missing the point though. Like, <sighs> not saying that, and the thing is, it's like I don't know how much that guy knew, how much mm. he didn't know. He should know better. The director knew better. They say, he said a couple of people in that room looked at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but since he's their boss, he's not gonna, they're not going to say anything. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if it is a black person that's upset, it's they're upset because of the fact that the K-pop record took the fuck off. And if it was done by a hip-hop artist... Would it have got the same? Uh, oh, I see what you're saying too. Same play. I, I, get, I get that. that I mean, that's, I'm not, that's, I'm not, that's, I'm, it's a real thing. I'm it's not oblivious thing, to that. I'm not oblivious yeah. to that. But it's, it's still like this. But at the end of the day, that's still not Lisa's fault. Yeah. No. It's, yeah. That, it's not. It's, it's, it's a product of the way the system works. Yeah. You yeah. know, now if everybody would just be open to listening to different things then it, that issue could be solved. That's why you need allies. Yeah. But but at the same time, do we have to listen to them? You know, like... Do we have to listen to who? Everybody's opinion on nah. these things. You know, because... I mean, I, I feel like Lisa should continue to do what she did. Like I said, she she handled it on her own. There was really no reason, you know, that guy fools. Why aren't you... Get out here and defend Lisa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody hit us up. I mean, yeah. But it's just like... Why did why do we need to go defend it? She handled it already. Yeah. She she said what she wanted to say. I just kind of wanted to talk about it just because it's an interesting conversation. It was. It's, it's about a conversation anyway. that most people don't really want to talk about because mm -hmm. they think their channel is going to get canceled. Or oh, yeah, or even have the um, 
um, or outside of reactors, but even have the knowledge to even speak on it. You know, it's it's a it's a tough. It's not a. It's tough. You know, I mean, like we, we we're not even talking about the whole spectrum. We're just talking about aspects of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, I, at, but at the end of the day, the overarching question is: Was Lisa culture appropriate? Not even. And a little I still bit. think she wasn't. I don't think she was either. And I would love for her to continue to make music that makes her happy. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's the thing. Like, she's enjoying herself. Yeah. She looks like that. That I think that's why I love the record so much. Not just because, you know, it sounded like a cool hip-hop record. Mm -hmm. But to me, it sounded like Lisa was embracing herself and yeah. giving Elaine to truly just be herself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when I saw all the hate for her, like, oh my God, these lyrics and da da da, da I'm like, yo, look at now, Lisa and what you she's know, doing. So, and, and you know, in hip hop culture, there's a huge thing about respect and proving yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So when Eminem first came out, that, that's, that comes my name territory. is, I heard my name is, and I was yeah. just like, yo, this shit is super whack. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Super whack. Yeah. And then there's, one of my white co-workers, like, I really trusted his opinion because we listened to the same type of music. Mm -hmm. And he had came to me like, yo, I got that real Slim Shady album. You need to listen to it. <laughs> and I was just like, really? <laughs> he, just like, he, he handed me his CD. He's like, bro, go home and listen to this. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's good. It? And he was right. Yeah. The first single was not a good representation of right. how dope he was as an MC. Right, right. As M Eminem continued to make music, he gained most hip-hop fans respect, True. right? True. Iggy Azalea, when the new classic came out, it wasn't pretty. But, can't front, over the years, she's gained a lot more people's she's respect. She's being herself. Being herself. Yeah, being herself. You know, that's the key. Yeah. I feel like Lisa is being herself. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like if the person did comment, I feel like the person isn't a K-pop fan. Yeah, okay. Because, and, I mean, the re and the reason why I say that is because you you obviously don't understand like how much our culture has had an effect on the world. Like some yeah, people are amazing. so short-sighted and don't don't see anything. Yeah. And they're taking aspects of hip hop and R and B, yes, but at the same time they're transforming it into something that's somewhat unique as well. Yeah. So it's just like you you check out Anita. Oh, Anita, shut up. <laughs> and it's like, when I hear Anita, yeah. I hear pop music. Yeah. I, hear, yeah. I hear groovy R&B yeah, music. Yeah, she blends. But yeah. I also hear a sound that I've never even heard True before that. because True that. that she's Brazilian. They have a whole different vibe. And I'm pretty sure if you go back a little bit further, they're influenced by something a little bit Portuguese, you know, mm -hmm. something from mm -hmm. Portugal yeah. that I'm not aware of. And probably yeah. some from Africa. Um, it's a hundred, you know? I mean, yeah. but, you know, all the music, it, initially everybody goes back that direction at some point. Yeah, yeah you, can, you, can't, you can't cut that off. And, and, and what she's doing, she's making a voice for people like her. All the other Lada Lisas out here in these streets who, <laughs> who, who, who wants to embrace something may not feel comfortable. Like, so that, yeah. that's, that's a voice and we can't let we can't I, let somebody, I feel them on one that, person. 100%. Yeah, because there's what, probably a lot of people, I mean, that's what music is for, right? Expressing yourself. And, and it builds community. Yeah. It builds this. Like, it's, it's a beautiful thing, especially like when you especially when you can see an artist that gives you a voice. Yeah. Kanye, Kanye West, for example, gave me a voice. I felt like um, I, I, I grew up in those areas where, like, I, you know, I'm from these, quote unquote, screets. <laughs> um, but I wasn't a screen guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then when I got got a chance to hear a backpack rapper, I was like, oh my gosh, I wear my backpack like that too. Man, that was the era too. <laughs> I was just like, yo, what? And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let somebody come in and send a tweet off to Ye when he started off and say, yo, what you doing with that backpack? <laughs> that ain't hip hop or whatever the case is. And we yeah. miss out on beautiful music, you know, and an and opportunity for somebody to change the culture. She's She's obviously making waves with this one song you know and it's sh that shouldn't stop i hope that doesn't stop her from wanting to express herself or second guess herself because i feel like when it comes to this this art once you start second guessing yourself mm -hmm. 
it, it gets that much more harder. I, I, I like that you pointed that out because I recently, the last couple of weeks, I um, like to listen to Eric Nolan's podcast a lot. Oh, shut up. And um, <laughs> he had uh, Tiger JK on there. Oh, shut up. And I learned so much about, like, just how he grew up because, you know, he grew up over here in the States and, you know, he moved back to Korea. But he pointed out on that how just, like, you know, everything around him was hip-hop and stuff like that. Yeah. So... If y'all ever get the time, listen to that interview. It was amazing. It was really, really good. But it's just, that's just what it is. So, do you want it to be a secret, or do you want it to continue to grow worldwide where you can and go it can tour influence anywhere? other people. And we can learn something. It, 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 can't, sure. it can't stay a secret if, if you want it to be bigger. A lot of people are so stuck in the box, and, you know, and if they see somebody like Lisa, um, you know, Doing it the way that she's approaching her own style and everything like that, or like you know, creating her own style. I mean, just come on, man. It, it's scary, but I feel like it kind of bridges as well. Like, you know, I wouldn't say it's flattery, but you know, it, it kind of helps, you know, bridge the cultures. Like when we first was listening to K-pop, we we appreciated because of the Michael Jackson influence that we've heard. Well, at least what I heard. I was like, oh, that's cool, you know? But then it allowed me to kind of open the door and become a real fan. Like, oh, this is really amazing. And then dive deeper into it. Like, okay, people have their own unique styles, this. I'm not looking at it from a surface um, surface value now. Now I'm looking at it in a deeper and it's a more of appreciation, you know? And that was because of, I guess, you know, they was like, hey, I like, I like this. I like this too. This is my form of it. Okay, I, I see what you're yeah. going with this. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty dope. That's dope. And that's yeah. now you're kind of you're sharing energy. You know, you're sharing smiles, enjoyment. Like that's that's dope. That's what we want. Yeah. You know, we don't want to sit there and keep the the culture secret. Like you can't you can't come in because we'll never be able to grow. You know. But like Dame was pointing out, is just people will get salty over the fact that they did something that somebody else would do. And, and it was successful. Yeah. I get it, but it's not. That's not always the case. It's not. Yeah. Well, while we're still here, I want to talk about uh, toxic uh, fan bases. Yeah, that's different. Um, yeah. So um, we had some comments in our Lisa performance video. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't cool. Or it was, I guess, more specific, a comment. Yeah. Where someone said, they're onces, I don't want them to hate Lisa. Let me get the comment for oh, you. Oh, that's not cool, man. No, they, they were trying to bring up a, a So a apparently, um, onces and blinks have beef. Mmm. Let me let me see. Um, I find that awkward. Because your love, your love of of twice means you have tons of once on your channel, and many of them hate anything Blackpink or Blackpink members put out. But it's a hit regardless of what they think. And the other comment was, um, "Are they a twice fanatic?" I immediately hit the unsub. Uh. I don't want them hating Blackpink or Lisa. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start this off very very bluntly. Let me start it off with this. No, oh, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> and pointing at this. I'm, this. I'm, I'm just going to say it flat out, okay? I have my, my if, black pink hammer up here. <laughs> if you don't know TRC by now, then you need to just either stick with us or leave because we ain't about that. Nah, we appreciate really. all groups. We love what we love. We love fandoms, but yeah. we will not take like sides or none of that bullshit it, because it's, it's just pointless. Pointless, man. Um, it, it's, it's really, in my opinion, I would say that, very childish. And we embrace over here. a whole girl, girl. <laughs> lot of different um, music, cultures, and whatnot and everything like that. But when it comes to fandoms, and all this Phantom Wars and shit like that, y'all can leave that outside of TRC. I don't give it no smoke. I don't give it no gas. You love what you love? Cool. But TRC does what TRC want to do. If TRC want to play twice and then listen to a Blackpink song right after, we will do it. Absolutely. 
So y'all can leave that outside of this channel. But yeah, go ahead, Dave. Say what you want to say. <laughs> nah, Benny, Benny, I can see. Benny oh, oh no, no. Nah. You know, because you know you speaking for yourself, but it's like, nah, we're. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan first, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. and even me, I don't like to choose. I try to shy. I shy away from choosing bias and things of that nature because I know how hard they work as individuals, mm -hmm. as a group. And to, to single somebody out to me is like, oh, it, it's like ah, and like the pick size as well. It's like, man, these they're they're creating amazing music, and as a whole, I love the fact that K-pop is carving its own lane and getting respect out here yeah. in these streets. So you you got you got to appreciate that, and you know, for us to pick sides, like, nah, we want to root. I want to root for all the groups to be successful, mm -hmm. and even with our our critiques, we're not we don't try to just critique you know and just say mean or just terrible things like we, right, right. We're, we're speaking from an honest place as fans you yeah, know yeah so these artists man they they put in so many hours just to give us some content we have to appreciate that and respect that so now we can't choose sides they're both amazing and there's plenty of times on this channel where i have not even like the black pink or a black pink member release or a twice release and i have stated why yeah is like I've never favored one over over or over the other. If you're new to this channel, go back and look at some of our reactions. We give honest critiques on the music, not yeah, based yeah. on the fandom or the group. It's never one or the other. It's because of the music itself. It and it makes it tough for us. Uh, I feel like because I don't know. Like if you if you choose a side, sometimes mm -hmm. you know you get that push. You know. Um, but you know, being biased and being honest, I think is a better place because you get to really enjoy everything. Because the ones that have to choose sides, they, they miss out. You know, they miss out on good music or good good things. If you, you know, you, oh, I'm only going to listen to this. I'm not going to pay attention. I mean, to I'm it. not. I'm not going to tell you what to listen to. I'm not going to say that you're wrong for listening to what you want to listen you're to. You missing out. But I mean, yeah, you're missing out. <laughs> you but say I do. You know what I'm saying? You're <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's yeah, everybody's personal. Out. That's everybody's personal choice. If they choose not to listen to somebody, cool. Yeah. I just don't like when, you know, if if a person chooses to the to listen to the group that you don't particularly enjoy. Don't flack them for it. Like, I've seen that in the comments sometimes. Yeah, I see. But and, my whole thing is, you can't tell somebody not to listen to somebody because you like one fandom, so mm -hmm. you're supposed to hate the other one. Well, in this case, if you think that just because our channel or one of our members is a once fanatic, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shut up. Just because you think that and you think that I think that's why I came off where the comment was kind of disrespectful because don't don't say that our platform is going to bring hate on a particular group because if I Ooh, see that no, shit, no, I'm no. shutting it back. <laughs> no, we can't. I'm telling you right now. Uh, right. I look at all the comments like I haven't been commenting back as much as I used to because I've been real busy, but I'll be looking at the comments and if I see any of that shit, I shut it down. Not only that, we got moderators too. Yeah, What's so that? it's just like ain't, ain't ain't with none of that, man. We ain't we are never. I don't ever want to see TRC once is uh, oh, yeah. once <laughs> hates on the black people. Like y'all will never see that from us. <laughs> Either way, vice versa, oh, never at all because we ain't about that. And like I said, I know we get new viewers and new people every other day or whatever like that. But just know, TRC ain't about that life. Yeah, I mean, our first K-pop reaction was a Blackpink Black reaction. Do, do, do. I mean, I got canceled <laughs> in that reaction. We, we know better now. Yeah, 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 it's okay, it's okay. We I got better. canceled. Not you two. You two were fine. I got canceled. Now. But, I mean, look, everybody has favorites, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all watch the channel. I love Twice, right? I like Blackpink a lot. I'm upset that they don't drop as much as I like them to drop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's cool. You know why that's cool? Because that gives other artists time to drop. I go. love Red Velvet. I love Itzy. I love... You, you see this stuff back <laughs> here, man. Mama Moo. Weekly, I, you, Dreamcatcher, Mama Moo. Itzy. And Luna, like... It's not a dream game. catcher. <laughs> like, really be out here listen. listening to multiple people. Don't listen to the same thing all it's the time. It's okay to be a multi, y'all, and I don't yeah. give a damn. No, it's, I, it's not it's that it's better. okay. You I think should. you're missing out if yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 
to anybody that hasn't heard Wu-Ha Purple, like, you Purple. Are, you are missing out. Yeah. We tried to push that so much, man. Yo, Let's like, make it's a trip to see the, the views on that. And it's not like I want the views for the clout. No, I want the the views because the Wu-Ha yeah, like, needs to be seen. Yeah, we try to show y'all how dope this stuff is. <laughs> yeah, Pixie needs to be seen. Yeah. Wano's video needs to be seen more. Shout out to Waho. <laughs> you know, like, it's, victims' Shut videos up. need to be seen more. Like, Absolutely. This, this is a thing. Right. You know what I mean? And I just think it's ridiculous to hate on somebody because you're supposed to. This is, this is why I'm not a fan of a team in football anymore. <laughs> wow. it, it causes tribalism. You know, thank God for fantasy football. Hmm. Fantasy football was the it, it really like made me look at things because yeah. I was a New York Giants fan and if you were a Dallas Cowboy fan I hated you. Yeah, for I hated no your reason. Guts. You sucked. You picked America's team. Is that team. what this is? You you picked is America's team. Is that what fandom is? Yeah, teams, yes, man. It's tribalism. It's tribal. Oh my gosh. So yeah, like I read you, a book on that. You were like the salt. You were the salt and scum of the earth, and and you picked America's team and you ain't even been to Dallas before. But, but then in fantasy football. I ended up with Tony Romo as one of my quarterbacks. And then I quickly, and then not, not just that, I had players from every team. And then it was just like, it would be so stupid for me to watch a game like, okay, I need Tony Romo to score four touchdowns versus the Giant to win my fantasy football team, but I still need them to lose a football game. It gets, bro, that's too much. Yeah. But I think in some ways rivalry is good. I was about to say, it's you definitely know, good. To a certain extent, rivalry is good. Competition is cool. Yeah. But so it's not like I'm against, you know, fandoms or tribal or whatever, you know, people being against each other, but not I mean, in such a way. Arguably, we participate in, in that a little bit with yeah, our, with with our quarterly list yeah, and yeah, things know, of that nature. All right. But, but at the end of the day, though, when it comes to music, like, hip hip hop and K-pop are different. Hip hop is very competitive. Yeah. But yeah, it is. at the same time, I still try not to indulge too much in the in yeah. the competition. Like there's times I will when you're asking me, "Oh, Biggie or Tupac?" and it's just like, "Well, I can grow off Tupac's music. I can feel like I can like grow as a person, but with Biggie's music, I lyrically he's definitely better." So it just depends on what category you're asking me. Right. right. You know, with Nas, I can visualize these stories that he's telling. Like it's different. K-pop doesn't come off competitive like that. It yeah. feels more like it's supposed to be something that's consumed and enjoyed yeah. and shared with people. When we went to these concerts, when we go to these concerts, bro, it's crazy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah. So to think that people at these concerts are hating on people, <laughs> it's like, yo, y'all seem like the happiest people on earth. You, you know what's crazy? And then y'all go on Twitter and lose y'all damn mind. <laughs> And because you can get overboard with the hype and the energy because the energy's fun. You know, it's, it, it gets fun, but then, you know, it can kind of turn into something different. And right. we've seen it. We, you know, hip hop definitely has been around longer than K-pop. Right. But we've seen it with hip hop where that that those sides ended up with death. You know, yeah. people losing their lives because people were picking sides. East Coast against West Coast. So we've seen it in the worst way. So we're kind of biased to say, look. Don't do that because it's you know we see we know it in what, the worst we know way. what it can lead to. We know what it can lead to, and we see it in the I worst way. I want to see Lisa and Momo fighting. I yeah, I want to see. I want to see, see, see Momo see that. doing choreography. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. What the fuck is you talking and, about? And because of those type of things, we missed out on some of the, the most amazing collaborations, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah. if Jay would have made more music with Nas, I'm glad they're cool now. But there's you know I'm it sure there's so like many twenty years to get there. It took them twenty. Like why? Why we gotta see y'all when y'all old? <laughs> Why couldn't we see y'all when y'all was in y'all prime? But like, it's not a good feeling when you saw, hey, IU has a new song featuring Sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, bro, that that's it feels like an event. Yeah. It's just like yeah. word. Yeah. Damon has a a, a performance with Momo and yeah. Shay and Chewie. He's like, what? Right. And even with, even with like like uh, artists on our American artists, Cardi B, Meg The Stallion. Yeah. You know, like yes, Wale. go go Wale. Like my bad, well. Oh, yeah, you can't call Depending him. Depending on who you ask. We all need him. We all need him. Chill out. Problems. Chill out. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a big deal, though. Yeah, like, that's huge. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. We should be celebrating it. You know, give it a listen. Give it a, uh, you, some you time. Saw, you saw the Blackpink Coachella joint? 
Yeah. When they were meeting people, they were like, yo, that, that's Will Smith. Yeah. Like, they, that's amazing. Yeah. That just lets you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's reaching across all shores of the sky. Bro, when the aliens get here, they're going to be like, yo. This that black big yo. When that's Nas aliens right there. Get I, here, I heard yo. Nas on Percatroy. Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> Do you hear this, man? Like, we started twerking. When we heard Cardi B for the first time. Alien? Uh, Alien. <laughs> Alien started twerking. You, know why? you heard because it here first. Music is the universal language. I universal, say it all man. the time. It's a universal language. So any aliens show up and they pull their guns, just throw on some um, throw on pretty savage. They gonna be like, word? Metaf- throw on Itsy twenty one. I mean twenty. Throw on Itsy twenty. It's it's gonna it's gonna they gonna feel it. They be like, "What's that feeling I'm feeling? Like, I feel like I gotta pop it and drop it." Now, now as you think about it, head, shoulders, there. knees, toes, man. Lee high up in this joint, man. We only got an alien sighting after Dr. Dre announced that he was gonna finally drop the detox. Right. Oh my You're god! Right. I forget about oh, you know what I'm saying? Yes, How did we get they here? Was, they was probably trying to come down because he was like, "Well, they were like, oh, yo, we were we waiting. <laughs> they were they were waiting too. They were waiting. <laughs> <laughs> that that might be it, man. Oh my god! Best form of communication, man. Do a song. Yeah, we don't understand each other, but it's something that about the music that it, it's a vibration we feel. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibration. Ah, uh, that's where vibe comes from. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, we we, we done. <laughs>